Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. In this video, I'll be talking about how to increase your character's survivability. There's many different layers of defense in DDO, and I'll be covering all of these in this video. What I'll be going over is PRR, MRR, concealment, incorporeality, DR, dodge, hit points, healing amp, and repair amp. This is a long video, so if you want to check out the description below, I posted timestamps so you can skip forward in the video to any one topic if you want to. There's a couple things I'm not going to discuss in this video. One, the first one is saves. and I'm not going to discuss saves because I feel that that's a different topic, even though saves are extremely important in Epic Elite. The reason, Another reason I'm not discussing saves is their importance varies depending on what content you're running. And high saves generally aren't something you need except for Epic Elite. Also, saves are very class dependent. And this video is more about how to reduce damage directly, and saves don't reduce damage directly, they more or less reduce damage indirectly. Two other things I'm not going to cover. I'm not going to cover AC or evasion. AC is very niche, and it's not something most builds have or should be concerned about so I'm not going to talk about it. The reason most builds really don't have access to AC is because one it takes a lot to get a very useful epic elite AC and because of the diminishing returns in the system today. Also uh, building for a super high AC is not an option for most characters. The other thing I'm not going to cover is evasion. Evasion is not a big part of survivability nowadays because it's generally outclassed by heavy armor. Every character that can, sh really every character except uh, monks should be wearing heavy armor nowadays and it's possible to wear heavy armor nowadays so you really should not be using evasion anymore. I know that's a bit controversial, maybe some of you guys agree, but that's my opinion. Let's go ahead and get started and talk about your general approach when you gear gear your character to uh, really make them last longer in combat. Your approach should be to dabble in all of these things I've listed. You should not focus on only one. The reason for this is some of them, such as incorporeality and dodge, have caps. Some of them, like PRR and MRR, have diminishing returns, which means the more you invest in it, the less you get out of each bit of investment. So you don't want to be putting all of your focus in those. But let's get started with PRR and MRR. This is a very important aspect of increasing your character's survivability. You want to get as much of this as you can without investing too much in it. Generally, you'll get a lot of PRR by going for heavy armor, which you should on your character if you can. You should also get a PRR boost by equipping a PRR item. There's insightful PRR items, there's enhancement bonus PRR items. I think at a minimum you should have an enhancement PRR bonus and we wearing heavy armor, but if you can also work an insightful in there somewhere, that helps as well. But you don't probably don't want to give up a whole item slot just for an insightful bonus. So if it's something you can equip that you don't have to give up too much for or if it fits nice with uh, the rest of your equipment and what you generally want in that gear slot then you could possibly get it in there but generally get an enhancement bonus to PRR and equip heavy armor and you should be pretty good as far as your PRR and MRR score and as I've said the best way to get PRR and MRR is by equipping heavy armor equipping heavy armor requires zero investment other than your armor slot unlike evasion which requires you to invest in a high reflex save which is one of the other reasons evasion is not so great heavy armor you can get a great bonus to survivability just by equipping the item evasion you not only have to work in the feat which may include a two monk splash or a two rogue splash but you also have to increase your deck score and increase your saves which all require item slots because evasion does not work unless you have a good reflex save because if you fail reflex save evasion doesn't do anything A couple updates ago, the developers buffed heavy armor, and as I mentioned before, they buffed it too much because it's flat out better than evasion right now. There's no reason to use evasion, and even if you're a rogue, 
or with evasion, you're better off equipping heavy armor and losing your evasion, in my opinion. As I said before, monks don't have this option. But unfortunately, if we're talking min-maxing, there's no real reason to play a me melee monk these days other than for flavor. Um, it's also good to... Sp you can splash monk if you want. That's often very viable for splashing. But as far as a pure melee monk, there's really no reason to play them over a paladin, barbarian, or swashbuckler these days. But hey, DDO is not all about fun. It's about flavor as well. I run partially a flavor build, so that's fine if you want to go that route. I just want to point this out that uh, if you can... I really want to focus and really emphasize the point that if you can fit e heavy armor onto your build, you should. It's that good. Even after the slight nerf in the Temple of Elemental uh, Evil update where they reduced the base values a little bit. Now, you might be thinking, hey, I'm an arcane caster. How can I wear heavy armor? I, it'll cause arcane spell, arcane spell failure. And you're right, it will. But there's many ways to reduce your arcane spell failure down to zero. There's there's augments, there's enhancements. If you are an arcane caster and you can fit in heavy armor somehow, I would very much recommend you do that. Take those enhancements, look at the enhancement trees, figure out what you need to take to get your arcane spell failure down to zero and do it. Alright, let's move on to concealment. Your main sources for concealment are blur and displacement. Blur gives you a 20% concealment bonus and displacement gives you a 40% bonus. And these are flat out chances to miss. So if the enemy doesn't make it through your blur or doesn't make it through your enhancement, they fail in that 20% or 40% chance, and then none of your other defense matters. They just missed. They just missed. That's it. There's also a dusk enhancement a uh, dusk item you can get which is a 10% concealment bonus which is available on and items like the dark dusk heart from the demon sands pack if you're looking for some kind of concealment other option for concealment in heroic levels but I want to really emphasize one thing it's a must to have blur and displacement options on every character let's talk about blur first in epics you should either have a perma blur item or you should have the spell if you don't have the spell, say you're not a wizard or a sorcerer, the best way, in my opinion, to fit this into your gear set is through a green steel 45 HP item. When you're building a 45 HP green steel item, you really don't have any other better options anyways for the effect on the item. So if you're going to have a 45 HP item in your gear set, I would go ahead and slot blur in there if you're a class that doesn't get it from a spell. Another option is Blur Wands, but they're only a rare drop in chests. You can buy them off the auction house, but it's a little bit of a pain to deal with. You get a lot of convenience by just equipping a perm blur item. You can just throw that into your gear set and not have to worry about it. It's a, it's a good quality of life improvement. As for displacement, every character needs a displacement option. I know that sounds weird if you're running a fighter or some other class that doesn't get the spell, but there's this great thing called green steel displacement clickies that you every character has access to. It's a very easy item to craft. You craft this through the shroud. You can either buy the ingredients off the auction house or you can just farm shroud for a while. But it's not that hard of a craft because it is only tier 2. So it's not too difficult to run some shrouds, get some ingredients, and craft yourself a few displacement clickies. I would recommend you make at least three of these. I run four. What these are really helpful for is if you're running Epic Elite and you're in a room with tons of mobs, tons of melee mobs, tons of archers, whatever, you just click on a displacement clicky and it immediately increases your survivability by a lot for that encounter. Another little tip that a lot of people don't know is that if you're going to craft green steel displacement clickies, you should craft them on a quarter staff. The reason is it gives you a little bit of extra length to the clicky duration. When you're using concealment, just be aware that a lot of monster champions and some bosses have true sing, so they're going to go right through your concealment bonus. It will not affect them at all. Let's move on to incorporeality. This gives you an incorporeal mischance, and this stacks with concealment. A lot of people don't understand this, but if you have a 
say a ghostly bonus and blur on your character both of those stack for most classes you'll only have access to ghostly which is a 10 percent incorporality mischance monks and the avatar of nature epic destinies offer 25 percent bonuses and pale master wizards can actually get up to a 35 percent bonus with improved shrouding but as far as ghostly goes for most characters it's really not hard at all nowadays to get ghostly there's a lot of item options if you're looking for what options are available just go to the ddo wiki and search for it you'll find an item page just find one that fits your gear set uh, one thing to note that is if you're equipping the shadow dragon full plate which everybody should at level 28 unless you're say a monk the who can't um, wear full plate because they need to wear cloth for their monk abilities um, you get ghostly with that item ghostly comes equipped on the shadow dragon full plate so you don't have to worry about ghostly at all at level 28 fitting it in, in anywhere else everyone should be wearing that um, shadow dragon full plate it's by far the best defense item in the game in my opinion because of the DR on it so make sure that uh, if you're equipping that item you don't have to worry about getting ghostly and that leads us right into DR DR is a flat reduction in the damage you take it's not important as other abilities and a lot of content and a lot of level ranges because it generally doesn't scale well small bonuses like DR5 from sources like War Priest or an invulnerability vulnerability item become worthless after low levels just taking five damage off an enemy attack just doesn't mean much when you're in epics and you're being hit for 100 damage um, the other thing about DR is it can be vastly overpowered if <laughs> you have it at a uh, at certain other levels like the DR from the Shadow Dragon plate that I just mentioned earlier has a base DR 30 and base DR 60 when at half health or below so that's a great bonus I can't reinforce it enough every character except a monk should be wearing the Shadow Dragon full plate with the Guardians upgrade Um, some other options while you're leveling, because I know you're not going to spend most of your time at level 28. Most people don't. Uh, some other options are the DR uh, from the Stone Skin spell. You can get that on some clickies. I believe you can get that from a wand. If you're an arcane caster, you can have the spell. and That gives you DR 10. You can also get DR from items like the Cloak of Night. Those give 10 DR eat. That gives 10 DR and those are probably your best leveling options I know I have a cloak of night that I can equip at level 20 it's a nice little swap item 10 DR is not a lot but hey if you can fit it in you may as well just don't give up too much don't give too much um, up for it don't give up a whole item slot for 10 DR and epics and let's move on to energy resistance which this is basically DR except for spells the best source of this is your guild ship buffs or the resist energy spell energy resistance in generally is not something you have to really invest in that's why I don't include this as a separate topic uh, when I initially listed all the items I was covering at the beginning of the video just generally just use your ship buffs use the resi resist energy spell you'll be fine there's also a 35 energy resistance bonus from the first tier of the divine sentinel tree um, you can also buy potions if you don't have the resist energy spell I wouldn't go too far out of your way to get a super high energy resistance since as I said you can get energy resistance from buffs from pots from spells uh, some people like to farm out in really good energy absorption items for certain quests and that's a good idea if there's a quest where say enemies spam one certain kind of damage like say the shadow dragon raid where they spam negative energy absorption or negative energy uh, spells you might want to get a negative energy absorption item for that maybe you're running a, a quest like um, taming the flames where they spam fire everywhere you might want to get a fire energy absorption item um, but it's something that's more situational than anything I think let's move on to dodge the best way to increase dodge is through dodge items if you can fit one in if you're wearing heavy armor you're gonna have a low cap on dodge so it's not gonna be all that important for you but if you're wearing cloths it's gonna be very important for you 
you, I believe you can get up to a 25% dodge chance if you're wearing cloth. If you're wearing heavy armor, that cap is lowered significantly. But generally, to increase your dodge, just get the highest dodge item that you can and put it in your gear set. Another option is you can twist unearthly reactions from Magister, which I really like for for my heavy armor build. It gives you plus six reflex saves, but it gives you plus three percent dodge on top of that. So that's a good little way to fit in some dodge without having to give up a item slot or gear slot. I'm sorry. So very important aspect of a of any build that's wearing cloth. But if you're not wearing cloth, if you're wearing heavy armor, it's not all that important. You, it's not something you can rely on. If you get up to, a, say, a 4% dodge, that's nice to have, but it's not something you can rely on um, because it's such a low proc chance. So it's more of a little, more of icing on the cake than anything. So try to fit it in if you can. If you can't afford it in your item, in your gear set, that's okay for heavy armor builds. Let's move on to hit points. A lot of people ask themselves, how much HP should I have? Here's my opinion. In today's game at level 28, I think melee should aim to have 1,000 hit points. If you're a backline caster, aim to have around 800, maybe a little less. The reason melee needs more hit points is because you're going to be taking more damage because you're up front on the front lines. Here's some ways to increase your hit point score. First off, uh, you obviously want a decent constitution score. I think that every character should start with a minimum of 14 constitution. You also need to always have equipped the highest constitution item that you can ha uh, find for your level that you can afford. And definitely the highest item that you can equip. As far as bonuses, there's false life. You always want to have the highest false life you can get. There's also vitality, which stacks with false life. A good source of that is the Three Barrel Cove item, the Iron Mitts. They give you plus 40 um, vitality bonus to hit points. Uh, another I class of item that stacks with both vitality and your false life is your Green Steel 45 HP items. I ha always have one equipped. Even at level 28, I have one equipped. I think a 45 HP item with your permabler slotted in is a not slotted in but crafted in is a great item for any character level 28 so bottom line for HP make sure you have the highest con item you can equip the highest false life item the highest vitality item and a 45 HP green cell item you should be on your way to having a nice HP score also be sure to farm out your Ar agents of Arganess in favor you need 150 favor to get a feat which gives you a permanent 10 HP boost. So if you haven't gotten 150 Agents of Argoness in favor, make sure you do that. Let's move on to Healing Amp and Repair Amp. How much healing or repair amp you need depends a lot on what you're using as your primary self-healing. If you're using Heal or Reconstruct, you're only going to need enough to fill up, say, around two-thirds of your health bar in one cast. But if you're a class like, say, a cleric healing with aura, or a monk healing with fists of light, or a barbarian using ravenger self-healing, you'll want to have more. And the reason is, if you're healing up in little increments, you never have the problem of overhealing. But if you're healing in bursts, say, with reconstruct or heal, it doesn't make a lot of difference, say, if you have 600 hit points and your heal is hitting you for 550 instead of 500, because you're not you want to hit heal way before you get that low in hit points. But when you're talking about healing in small increments, like through a cleric aura, the you never have a cap. You can never overheal. You always want to have the biggest, highest regen that you can. Healing amp items come in three different tiers. There's 20, 40, and 60. This used to be known as 10%, 20%, and 30% healing amp. At a minimum, I think you should have a 60 plus 60 healing amp item on. A good source of this is the Iron Mist from Three Bell Cove. That's a great item. I mentioned that before. It also has a vitality bonus on it for hit points. Um, the PDK gloves is an op awesome option at level 20. Now, if you heal through a region, as I said before, you're going to want more healing amp because healing amp is going to be more powerful for your character. So if you do heal through a region, I'd recommend fitting in a plus 40 boost from somewhere. 
you can get it through mysterious remnant item turn-ins, you can get it from a tower despair wing, you can get it from an item like the Levix Bracers. There's a lot of different options. As far as the plus 20 option, it's a lot. that's a lot harder to swap and I personally don't think it's worth it in most situations to just to give up a whole gear slot for just plus 10 healing amp. But if it's something you can fit in without too much trouble on your character, then go for it. Now as far as repair amp, there are not near as many options for repair amp. Your main option is blade forge enhancements. And that's really it. It's not commonly offered on any items. I believe the only option you have as far as items is the shadow scale docent. And you really aren't going to want to use that either because you're going to want to use the docent with guardians upgrade. As I said before, everyone should be wearing that that uh, shadow scale with with guardians upgrade. It's that good. All right, guys. So that covers all the topics I'm going over today. Um, I hope this helped you out. If you're a beginner, I think this will be more helpful to you. But if you're a vet, I hope there's at least a few things you got out of this that helps you. As always, guys, thanks for watching my videos. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And please spread the word and tell your friends and guildies about my channel. I really appreciate it. And that's all for today, and I will see you guys next time.